But we had a great time. We're outside of Haines, Alaska. We're walking down this dirt road. There's this loggers road that goes off into the woods. And Gary goes, look, there's a great big moose. And I turned and looked, and there was a great big moose. Because I guess there are no little moose. <laughs> and I go to Gary, Gary, get your camera. Take the moose's picture. Gary goes, no, if I take its picture from here, it will look like a horse. Now, I don't know how he knew that, but he's a magician, and I just figured they know. <laughs> but you have to understand, we are two city boys, because at that point, I go to Gary, Gary, let's just run up to the moose, and we will take its picture. We will just run up to the moose! <laughs> now, we start running. The first clue that we got that maybe something wasn't quite right should have been when the moose just calmly stood there, placidly chewing. And when we got close enough to see its eyes, it's like its eyes were saying, I'm pretty sure I can take these two. <laughs> we get about 20 feet away and stop, and I go to Gary, Gary, give me your camera, and you go get by the moose. <laughs> Gary didn't even hesitate. I already have the camera, and you get by the moose, to which I intelligently replied, okay. No, I go up by the moose, I get about 10 feet away, I turn around to hear Gary promptly say, he's coming right at ya! <laughs> now we learn two things about Gary in this story. The first thing we learn is that I am faster than Gary. <laughs> and when I ran by him, the noise he made was not exactly what you would call a manly noise. <laughs> In fact, I remember thinking the college girl might be right. <laughs> but you have to understand, at this point, we are all out running for our lives. Neither one of us cares about the other. Let me put it to you this way. If Gary had tripped and fallen, honestly, I would have been thinking, good, I'm going to live now. <laughs> We're sprinting through the woods. We come to a clearing. There's a shed. We go whipping around the corner of the shed. The moose is right behind us. Now I jump straight up at the top of the shed. I don't know how I did this. It must have been the adrenaline. Somehow I did a handspring, landed on my feet on top of the shed. I'm telling you, if it had been in gymnastics, tens across the board. <laughs> this is where we learn the second thing about Gary. Gary can't jump. <laughs> Gary hit the shed hard. But I'm on top of the shed, I'm safe, so it's fun for me now. Because I'm looking down, and what I'm looking down at is Gary running around the shed, and the moose is right behind him. And I'm yelling out encouragement, Gary, you might want to pick it up. Well, the moose is gaining on you. Hey, I've got an idea, throw me the camera. I'm pretty sure he won't look like a horse from here. <laughs> All right, that's really not what I was waiting for, though. Because I'll be calling Gary tomorrow and telling him I ran into the first audience ever that did not care, who could care less about what happened to him. <laughs> Usually someone yells out what happened to Gary, and the reason I wait is this is a true story. How I tell it is exactly how it played out, except when I went on top of the shed, Gary went around the corner, we both went out of sight from the moose. The moose just veered off into the woods and kept going. No, I was on top of the shed, I could see that. And when Gary would get tired and slow down, I'd just make a noise. He'd speed right back up again. <laughs>